public chat. And just so I can check the audio levels real quick, do you mind saying your name, event, and place, please? Ellie Purrier St. Pierre in the 1500. Thank you. And first question, uh, you stayed in first place that entire race and you have a new meet record and a new personal best. Uh, can you just walk us through that event today? Yeah, um, honestly, it was just a, such a blur. Um, in the first 50 meters, I got shoved pretty hard. And, uh, you know, I just like right after that happened, I realized I just really didn't want to like get pushed around or anything. So I just took took it and, um, you know, pushed the pace throughout the whole thing. And I knew that people would go with me. And so I just tried to be as strong as I could and lead it. This next question is from Nick McCarvel, Olympics.com. L, congrats. How do you describe your emotions around qualifying for Tokyo and what does the way you went out and led this race from the start say about you and the approach you've had all week? Um, you know, it's just really surreal. Like I feel like it still hasn't like set in. I, I've just been dreaming of this moment for so long and um, it's really emotional and I'm just so happy. I, uh, I'm just happy that my family's here to share this with me and my teammates and for everybody that's believed in me. And um, I'm just so happy. But yeah, I, um, I led most of it because I knew, you know, I believed in myself. So I knew that I was strong enough to do that. And I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be fast. Next question is from Adam Kilgore, Washington Post. It looked like you got jostled all the way off the track early on. What happened there from your perspective and did it tick you off a little bit? <laughs> yeah, it definitely did. Um, you know, I kind of forgot about it at this point, but um, yeah, I don't know what happened. I started, I was in the first lane. I was number one. So I, you know, obviously was on the rail. And I think that when the girls cut in, there was a collision somewhere that kind of just shoved me off. And I just jumped back on the track as fast as I could. And, um, you know, tried to not let it, you know, bother me, but also like, I'm like, I think it gave me a little bit of a boost and I wanted to get out of the mess and, and go to the front and I didn't want to get caught up in that. So I was just like, screw it. I'm going for it. Next question, Taylor Dutch. How did you adjust after the jostling in the first 100 meters? What was going through your mind in that moment? In the moment, I didn't really know what happened. I couldn't believe that I just got shoved off the track. Like when I, it was like just barely into the race. And, um, you know, after that, I just like, I'm gonna go for it. A reminder to the news media to please direct your questions to the chat. If you currently have your hand raised, we only do that at the end if I am waiting for questions. The next question is from Alex Z. Can you pinpoint a specific time when you went from hoping to make the US Olympic team to expecting to make the team? Um, yeah, I feel like expectations kind of suck. <laughs> and uh, I've always, hope to make the team that in the last like four years I you know I've really progressed a lot and I've always like who wouldn't hope to make the Olympics um but the ex expectations I really tried to put away and just focus on you know proving to myself that I can do it I I think expectations ruin things and so I still lining up today was you know not thinking that I got the job done before it was done Next question is from Eric Bull, dystat.com. How special is it to share this moment with Heather and what have you known about her abilities this year or in recent years that the rest of the world will finally get a chance to see more of in Tokyo? Heather's one of my very best friends. She was in my wedding and, um, you know, I've just always loved her ever since college. And so I was so happy that we were able to run together at New Balance. And I think that we just, you know, make each other better. We push each other in practice. And, you know, we, we have a lot of similarities. Um, you know, we're both really tough girls. And I think just training with her has been great for both of us. You know, it's, we've made each other better and we've supported each other through this. And, um, you know, I, <laughs> I didn't know what happened until I turned around. <laughs> But when I saw her name, I was just so happy. Like, we're just, we just get to do this together. 
The next question is uh, touches a bit on, on what we just talked about. This is from Taylor Dutch. How does it feel to make Team USA with your training partner, Heather? So exciting. We're gonna go get matching tattoos. <laughs> Oh, she's just awesome. She's awesome. I'm so happy for her. I'm so excited. It just makes it so much more fun and um, just goes to show like how great our coach is and, and uh, you know, he knows what he's doing and us working together has clearly worked out. <laughs> Next question from Ryan Thorburn, the register guard. Ellie, after the initial jostling, was your pre-race strategy to try to lead wire to wire? How did the how did the heat come into play during the race? Um, you know, like I, it just happens so fast. Like your your plan changes, but like you always have like a couple different plans in mind. <laughs> There's my family. <laughs> It was never to lead the whole thing. That was not my plan. My plan was to take it after the first lap if it was slower than I wanted to run. But I believed in myself. I knew I was strong enough to run the, uh, a really fast time. And um, so, you know, I, I did think about the heat a little bit, but um, on the track, I didn't really feel it. The race is short enough where you don't really feel it. And we've been training in the heat. So um, I felt well prepared. Next question from Doug Bender. What has Jenny Simpson meant to you as you grew up and began competing in her event? Um, Jenny is a huge role model to me. Um, I, I look up to her immensely and I've loved following her career and we've, we've spent a lot of time together or quite a bit of time together in the last couple of years. We were roommates in Doha and uh, you know, we really got along really well. And, and I feel so fortunate to have her had led the way for all of us and you know I just really respect her and you know how calm she is in race situations and her expertise and you know I, I just try to 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 mimic that a little bit sometimes in my races and um yeah I'm just it's amazing that somebody I've looked up to for so long and and now I get to to run with her and yeah I, I, kudos to her Next question is from Larry Etter, Run Blog Run. Larry says, congrats, you run fearlessly. Do you, do you relax up front as you are controlling the pace? I try to, but it's the Olympic trials, so I'm trying not to relax too much. <laughs> um, but I did think about that before. I'm like, I can run hard. I can run a hard pace. Like I, we've practiced this so many times. And so I'm just thinking, trying to stay relaxed as I can, but uh, also just running off of the energy of the meat and trying to get the job done. I wasn't slowing down for anything. Next question is from Nick McCar McCarville, olympics.com. Ellie, love that you live the rural life that you do. What do you want people to know about you and why you live well, differently from a lot of other people. And can you tell us one of the quirkiest things you do on a regular basis on the farm or with the animals? Uh, you know, I'm really thankful for the way that I grew up. And I, I think that there's a lot of small town people out there just like me, and that might even be the majority of Americans, to be honest. Um, I'm, you know, so thankful of the way that I grew up. I, I don't really know of any quirky things. I just love living on a farm and I wish that more people got to to grow up that way I think that you have a great connection with um, nature and just understanding biology and you know it makes you tough and so I wish that more people got to grow up that way okay a reminder to the news media to please direct your questions to the public chat if you're currently writing a question please use the raise hand feature so I know to wait okay I do see a raised hand so we'll just wait one moment okay Next question is from Nick McCarville, olympics.com. Were there visions of Tokyo on those rural roads at home? Yeah, um, you have to come from somewhere, right? And I, I kind of like love where I came from. And I, I've been thinking about Tokyo for quite a few years now. And every day when I run, I'm thinking I'm doing this to make the team. So yeah, I've definitely thought about Tokyo on my runs with my dog <laughs> in Vermont. <laughs> Next question is from Alex Aziz. What is your goal for Tokyo? My goal would be to medal. 
I really think that I have a great chance at that and that would be the ultimate goal. Next question, Weldon Johnson, let's run.com. Do you think the race played out differently without Shelby here? Do you have any thoughts on her suspension? Um, I don't think it, it went out any different. Like I, I think that, yeah, she probably would have uh, pushed the pace. She would have been right up there. Um, you know, I, I don't really have a lot of comments to make. I wish that I could have got to raise her. Um, that part I was disappointed about, but um, I'm just trying to, you know, enjoy the moment now. Okay, another reminder to the news media to please direct your questions to the public chat. If you're currently writing a question, please use the raise hand feature so I know to wait. If you are currently not writing a question, please lower your hand so I know not to wait for you. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.